Hidden in every storybook, upside down and backwards round, tucked within the afterword lie the secrets dark and true that fill the pages of the Book of Scary. Once upon a time, many once upon a times ago, the beasts of the earth spoke a common tongue and walked upright like men. Each of a kind followed the laws of his own ruler, and all beast kind followed the laws of the first. The first beast, the great winged watcher, the goose mother they called her. Legend told that the world had been created when she first unfurled her mighty wings, but grief over its future had turned her to the stone that made Historius, the mountain at the top of the world. Her laws, written upon an ancient scroll and kept by the elder mice deep below the mount, were but three. No beast shall choose himself above his herd. No beast shall take more than he must to survive. No beast shall eat of his own kind. But the scroll also contained a prophecy— a terrible day would come when the earth would be cloaked in the shadow of a profaner. This shadow-bringer would break all three of the first laws before crushing the world beneath his feet. The scroll spoke of countless agonies, of famine, of babes snatched while suckling. Peace would shatter, kings would be forced upon all fours, and the ghosts of men would awaken to serve the shadow-bringer, just as his ancestors served them when the world was man's. And his coming, it was said, would be announced by the howling of a thousand wolves. Of a savior, the scroll said only this. If there be an end to this blight, the end will be small. Over a thousand years, these ominous words had softened a little more than a tale to quiet restless children. Sleep now, little ones, lest the shadow bringer hear you when he passes. The ghosts of men were reduced to crude masks, worn by revelers every year on Howler's Day. Only the wolves suffered from the prophecy in these years of calm. Reviled as the lowest of beast kind, they were cast out from every corner, forced always to wander. And yet, those who drove them away did not remember why they hated them, only that this was as it had been for ages, and that was enough. One could say this was how the prophecy began to fulfill itself, but those who would choose to forget their ancestors' cruelty would say it began on a dark night in an isolated cottage where a young sow gave birth as her boar husband watched anxiously on. Neither knew what evil crept outside their door, nor the many days of torment that would soon follow for all beast kind. But inside the humble little cottage there was only joy. Four piglets were soon born to boar and sow, three sons and one daughter. In the tradition of all swine, they named the firstborn Strongheart, for he was born squealing and kicking as if to fight. The secondborn they named Meekfoot, for he came into the world shivering and quiet. The third was so tiny and still, they feared he had not lived, but when he lifted his head and loudly squeaked, they rejoiced and called him Don Song. Before the fourth child could be named, however, a dreadful sound pierced through the night. A howl, long and cruel and close. I am here, this howl said. As mother and father pig looked at one another fearfully, that awful note was answered by other howls farther away. Yes, brother, they said, and we are here. Why? asked mother. What could they want? In answer, the door burst open and fell from its hinges, and in the doorway stooped a wolf as tall as the cottage itself. He wore a red-hooded cloak that was far too small, and the grizzled snout protruding from it dripped with blood. "'What do you want, wolf?' father asked in his bravest voice. The wolf let his hood fall, 
His face was horrible to look upon. It was scarred and matted, with two yellow eyes that could turn the bowels to water. He pointed to the babe in Mother's arms and snarled. That one. Mother gasped and clutched the girl child close, but the wolf only laughed. Either you give me one of your children or I'll take them all, he threatened. For tonight the wolves take our due. Father charged, prepared to defend his family with his life. And with his life he did. But it was the wolf who won. The ragged monster then moved toward Mother, but stopped short. Not you, he growled. You must tell the others. Tell them to fear. Then he leaned down and plucked Dawn Song from his bedding before disappearing into the night, leaving Mother alone with three crying piglets to comfort and a husband to bury. The stories say the screams that followed the wolves that night could be heard all the way to the abbeys below Mount Historius. That night, the stories say, the heart of hope itself was broken. <laughs>